So this is going to be a guide about jewelry traits and enchants for tanking. And I'm going to just kind of go over all the things that I like to use, the reasons why I use them, and what is the most beneficial stuff to use for tanking, basically. I'm going to go over only really my top four traits, and then we're going to go over all the different enchants that you might find useful. Uh, we'll have a little chat about the traits that I don't use and kind of why that why that is, but I want to explain to people why I'm using certain traits for certain situations and, and why I like prioritize certain things. So we're going to start off first of all with Triune. So one of my personal favorites in terms of jewelry is Triune. Now if you look at this, we've got increased maximum Magicka by 439, increased maximum stamina by 439, and increased max health by 482. Obviously now, if you use three of those, that all adds together. So, one of the really important things is tanks always need all three resources. So it's great to be able to spread into all three resources rather than focusing on just one. So if you focus on just health, then you're not going to have enough stamina. If you focus on just uh, stamina, you're not going to have enough magicka, you're not going to have enough health. So you need to always be aware that you need to always be able to use all three resources as a tank. There's not really any such thing nowadays as magicka tanking, stamina tanking. It's more of a case of you have to balance everything because no matter what, you're always got to use stamina for blocking with a sword and board. Sometimes if you're not using the Trifox passive on a staff, you always need stamina for blocking. You need it for pierce armor. You need it for heroic slash. You need it for a range of different things, such as dodge rolling and breaking free. You always need magicka for 90% of your skills. Like pretty much all skills that you use as a tank are going to be magicka based. So your healing's magicka, your blockade, pretty much all of your buff skills, everything is magicka. So you need to have enough magicka to be able to use those. Now, the more stats that you've got, the better it's going to be for your sustain. So if you're really bad at sustaining, you are still going to have those sustain issues whether you've got really high max stats or not. So you need to be able to manage your sustain regardless of what your max stats are. But the more max stats you've got, the longer you're going to have until you run out of resources. So one of the things that I like to do personally, and this is kind of trying to min-max it for more end game content. So when we look at the Triune Jewelry, first of all, you actually get more than what it says. Because when you've got things that say increases your stats by 10%, increases your max stats by another 5%, when you use a Warhorn, you get 10% more stats. When you're a Warden, you get 10% more health. So those things increase the amount of stats that you actually get from Triune. So just by using Triune now, I'm gaining more stats than it actually says. So if we look at my stat sheet, in this current setup now. I've got a huge amount of stats. I think this is without food. Let's pop some food. So look at my stat sheet. I've got 20k stamina. 40, well, 43.5k health. 23k stamina. So I've got a lot of stats. Now, if I take off the Triune and I use, let's say, Infused instead, there's a big, a big dip there in, in kind of resources. So my stamina has dropped a lot. Magic has gone under 20k. I've lost a lot of stats. I've gained a bit of magic recovery. But at the end of the day, the big thing here is I've lost max stats. Now, if you're trying to min-max a situation, so let's say you're trying to min-max your tank, then Triune is going to be more beneficial. And the reason for that is because you've got more max stats, you can spend more time casting skills on, on your global cooldown. So you've got a global cooldown, which is every one second you can cast something. Now, if you're having to spend a global cooldown to gain back resources, so heavy attacking, using balance, doing those sort of things, you're actually losing damage for your group because you're not able to cast something more offensive or you're not able to do something to benefit your group because you're doing something for yourself. So if you've got higher max stats, you can spend more time doing things to help your group rather than things to help yourself. Now, obviously, you do need to be able to sustain. You need to heavy attack occasionally. You're going to need to use balance occasionally. But if you've got really small stat pools, you're going to have to do those things more often because you're going to run out of those stats faster. So by having a really huge stat pool, you're going to be able to maintain those things for longer. 
And that is a huge benefit when you're trying to tank, is by not having to spend all of your time doing those things, you can spend more time dealing with mechanics, dealing with buffing and debuffing and doing the skills that you need to use rather than having to spend a, a, a second, a global cooldown on doing a skill such as a balance or a heavy attack. So you want to try and avoid doing those if you don't need to do them. But obviously, if you need to, then obviously do them. But I'm just what I'm the point I'm trying to get across is by having more max stats, you're not having to worry as much about the sustain. By wearing Triune, you have higher max stats. You can spend more global cooldowns doing things to benefit your group. Less time buffing yourself up. Um, and like I say, Triune scales the stats that you get from Triune scale with different modifiers. So like I say, Warhorn, you get a 10% increase in your stamina and your magicka. The higher pulls that you've got to start with, the more that 10% is going to give you. So that's really, really good. Um, you have an incredible incredible amount of health um, when you're in combat because of the Warden Healer. Usually using the Maturation Passive that gives 10% more health with Minor Courage. Sorry, Minor Toughness. Um, when you look at that fully buffed stats, they're just huge. So another good thing is if you're on a DK tank and you are using Engulfing Flames. You want to reach that 10% of engulfing flames. So the way to do that nowadays, you don't need to really spec your tank to get that 10% for engulfing. But by using Triune Jewelry, it'll be far, far easier than doing other stuff. Um, and, and it makes it a lot easier. So you can get to that 10% for engulfing flames with Triune Jewelry. If you're using Fused Jewelry, for example, you might actually be a bit off. You might be a percent or 2% away from hitting um, that, that number. So it's something to consider, especially for a DK tank in that situation. Um, all round, it's an amazing option for jewelry, especially for main tanks when you're taking a lot of damage and you have long fights, long block phases. Having more stats as a main tank is pretty vital, in my opinion. So this is my number one set, my number one trait for jewelry for like a main tank most of the time. Now, it's not for everything because there are certain situations where I prefer other stuff. Uh, by having those higher stats, it won't prevent sustain issues, but it means you can sustain for a longer period of time because you've got those more stats. But eventually, you are going to run out of resources if you don't sustain properly. What's important about the max stats? When you're trying to maximize your ability to tank, you do need to cast as much as possible. So everything always works better on a DK regardless because on a Dragon Knight, when you use your ultimate, you get all your resources back. So you can afford to kind of push yourself to the limit on using resources with a DK because you can just use your ultimate to get everything back and that's fantastic. Um, let's move on to infused. So if we move to infused now, if I was going to use infused, I used to use infused. This used to be my favorite infused magic recovery. So 270 magic recovery. Now, if you compare that to the 169 magic recovery you get, if you don't use infused, it seems like quite a lot. But actually, it's not as much as it, it kind of comes across. So we look at the magic recovery. 1958 magic recovery. Now, magic recovery ticks every two seconds. So you're going to get 2k magic almost every two seconds. But the thing is, when you compare it to non infused, is it really worth it? Because it's a couple of hundred difference. If we, if we take a look at the non infused, when we equip that. One six two five. While it's still, it's not a bad option. I kind of prefer infused magic recovery for really precise situations. So, I like to use this on off tanks occasionally. When you're doing things like the first boss in Vhof, where you need to purge a lot, obviously this is a better option. When you're doing things where you need to spam magic abilities, then obviously you'd use this. But like most of the time, max stats. Are more come across as more important. So Magicka Recovery works at its best. When you're on a Necro off tank and you're casting Empowering Grasp every couple of seconds, then obviously Infused Magicka Recovery is going to be better than Triune. When you're on a main tank and you need higher max health, you need higher max stamina because you're blocking a lot, you're having to keep yourself alive, you're having to cast a few buffs, then that's when Triune performs better. So, like I say, this did used to be my favourite jewellery trait, but honestly, when I switched over from Infused to Triune, I barely noticed any difference from a main tank perspective. Like, I switched over, I went with three infused magic recovery, I switched to three triune magic recovery, 
And there was no difference in my sustain. Like, I, I could still sustain all of my magical abilities. I could still keep myself alive. I could still do everything I was doing before. I just had more max stats. And I was able to actually do better because of that, rather than having the infused magical recovery. So this is more of a situational kind of trait for me. Like I say, off tanks, I like it for off tanking because they don't take as much jam damage generally as tank as main tanks. They're doing more of a support role where they're having to cast more um, buffs and debuffs and they're kind of supporting the group and they're having to take adds and they're having to do little bits of, of tanking, but they're not tanking 100% of the time in most fights. They're doing on and off tanking. So in that kind of situation, Trion's not as vital. The, the infused magic recovery would work out a lot better. Um, sometimes infused is good in with other enchants so we'll cover the other enchants in a little while but as an example infused magicka cost reduction for rock grove so that your mist form is cheaper that is a really really strong option for like the second boss in rock grove hard mode when you're going into mist form your mist form would cost like 1100 magicka per second if you use three infused magicka cost reduction it goes down to about 300 per second which means you can mist form for a much longer period of time so in that situation You've got to think about that's obviously more important than having magicka recovery. In mist form, you don't get any benefit from magicka recovery, so obviously there's no point in having it. So switching over to that is a much better option. In something like Sunspire, when you're doing Locusty's range tanking, that is a kind of situation where, again, infused is really good. Infused with um, stamina recovery, because you don't really have to block on that fight. You just de defensive stance spam, return all the damage back at the boss. That way, you've got the stamina incoming because you're not blocking. So, stamina recovery. That's the only time stamina recovery is even worth it. Obviously, you don't gain stamina recovery while blocking. So, stamina recovery isn't really worth it for a tank other than really precise situations. Also, stamina cost reduction. Reduce feet cost on infused jewelry would also be good in that situation because you can reduce the cost of that defensive stance. So, there are a couple of different ways to work this. Um, and another really, really great way to use infused is with potion cooldown so infused potion cooldown jewelry especially if you like a nightblade tank because you've got a passive for drinking potions if you're an argonian you get benefits from drinking potions so obviously again that's really good if you really really struggle for sustain infused potion cooldown will help deal with that sustain to a certain point but it is expensive because you can use a potion every couple like every 30 seconds or less with those infused potion cooldowns so it can be tricky for for like the cost of potions if you're using that kind of setup, but it is an option. It is an option for sustain, especially on some of those harder classes which don't have things that can give you boosts of sustain via skills and passives. But so I would say generally, it's always worth having a set of infused jewelry if you can afford to have multiple sets of jewelry. Let's say you do different kinds of tanking, different trials. It's always worth having an, a triune set of jewellery. And it's always worth having an infused set of jewellery as well. Because you never know when you need to customise different environments and different situations. So infused is definitely a good option. But it's just not my primary number one go-to for when I'm tanking. And if I had to kind of choose one trait, if I could only make one set of jewellery, it would be triune. Okay, so if we move over to my next favourite trait, it's going to have to be... Swift. Now, Swift is particularly nice for ad pulls and certain trials. So if you just kind of look at my movement speed quickly now, this is kind of my out of combat movement speed. Now, if we put the Swift jewelry on, we're going to get a huge boost to speed. So 7% increased movement speed per piece. So now... It looks like I'm sprinting when I'm not. I'm not even sprinting. When I do sprint, I move even faster. So, this is a very good trait, again, for tanking. So, each piece will increase movement speed by 7% on a gold piece of jewellery. It's a very situational trait, again. So, in the situations where you do use it, it's very, very good. So, the first place I use it is ad pulls when you're dealing with ads. Your main priority is always to be, number one, the first person into the ad pull. So when you're in a trial or a dungeon, your priority is always to be the first person in the ad pull. It's your priority to be the first person at the boss. You're always the first person because you're the tank. The way you do that is by using swift jewellery. Um, 
Another great feature of using Swift is you move very quickly. So you can you can taunt, you can chain, you can stack enemies much faster. So if you're running into an ad pull and you can taunt over there, you've got another ad coming over there, you can taunt, you can move, you can get everything stacked faster because you're using Swift. If you don't use Swift, trying to do ad pulls without Swift jewelry, in my opinion, is very, very slow and it can be really irritating. I've really noticed the difference when I'm using Swift and when I'm not using it. Because when I'm not using it, it feels really, really slow. And you don't want it, like that is the last thing you want in that situation. You need to be moving quickly. You need to be getting things stacked quickly so that your group can come into the ad pull and just burn everything down as fast as possible. So as a tank, Swift Jewelry is amazing for ad pulls. Other places that Swift Jewelry is really good, Vats off tanking. So if you go into Asylum Sanctorium as the off tank, Swift Jewelry is very, very important, especially when you're doing kind of the plus two. Movement speed is probably one of the most important things in Vast Plus 2 for the off-tank. You need to stack the mini-bosses on St. Olms as quickly as possible. And you can't do that if you're, not, if you're really slow. You need to be moving extremely fast to get everything stacked up really, really quickly. If you can't move quickly, you're not going to get the cleave damage on the adds and the boss to be able to do that trial fast enough. Then it becomes a really long trial. The group has to keep focusing the adds. That's one thing you want to avoid doing if you can. Um, you want to be just cleaving down either the boss or the ads, whichever one. But that's really hard to do if you're not able to stack the bosses fast enough. And the only way you can do that is by having really high movement speed. So Swift Jewelry in that situation, again, really, really good. Some people like to use a bit of Swift Jewelry in Cloud Rest. If you're doing like a Gallonway skip in Cloud Rest, again, really, really vital. Um, if you're not trying to do a Gallonway skip, not as useful. I would prefer Infused Magical Recovery in a Cloud Rest situation, for example, because it's a high resource intensive fight unless you're the like you're the main tank in execute then you might use my next trait which is going to be harmony so if you're the off tank in cloud rest or you're the main tank who doesn't do execute then infused magicka recovery would be the best because everything you're doing is magicka you're having to keep yourself alive in the portal you're having to keep yourself alive in a lot of situations if you're the execute main tank though you might try harmony so let's have a look at the harmony jewelry so this isn't very, I don't rate this um, jewelry type that much because it increases damage healing, resource restore and damage shield strength of synergies you activate by 20%. So if you're not activating any synergies and your group's not providing any synergies, this has got zero benefit. So if you use infused magic recovery, you've got the benefit of magic recovery 100% of the time. The only time that Infused Magic Recovery isn't good is obviously if you're at Max Magicka and you're not using your Magicka, then it's a waste. Triune is a 100% benefit because you've always got those max stats. So no matter what, Triune is a great set because you're always benefiting from the max stats. When it comes to Harmony, Harmony is a situational si like set because you don't ever have... It doesn't give you anything. Harmony gives you absolutely nothing unless you're using a synergy. So if your group doesn't provide them, obviously it doesn't do anything. Now, the places where it's useful, there's only really one in my opinion, and that is in Cloud Rest. So you go into Cloud Rest and you benefit from the increased healing by 20%. So when you combine three pieces of jewelry, 60% increased healing, and the synergy that you use is the Blood Altar synergy. So it's absolutely vital, it's critical for your group in Cloud Rest, if you're the main tank, the execute main tank, you use, in, you use three Harmony. You don't always need to, not everybody needs to, but if you're doing Cloud Rest for the first time, if you're trying to get your first clear, maybe you're going for a Griffin Heart, you want to play it safe. You don't want to die just because you weren't using three Harmony. So it's the safe option and it definitely helps. So what happens is you get marked for, you get the, um, the Baneful Mark, you kind of buff yourself up and then you activate the Blood Auto Synergy and that will max out your health very very quickly very very easily and it's because the harmony jewelry gives you that boost to the synergy that gives you the big heal now the only other time harmony is useful is when you're activating an orb or a shard synergy that gives you resources back so in that situation really really good but the problem is if you're not getting a synergy every 20 seconds on cooldown if you're not getting that orb synergy every 20 seconds and using it to gain 60% more resources back from it, then you're wasting it. So if your group doesn't provide those orb synergies, there's no point in using it. So potentially you could say this is good for sustain, 
because you're going to get 60% more resources back from an orb synergy. So great, loads, loads and loads of stamina. But if you're not able to activate that orb synergy every 20 seconds on the dot, then it, it loses its value. It starts diminishing value for every second you waste not using that orb synergy, you're losing sustain. And you'd be much better off having that triune or having that infused jewelry. Because those are more permanent effects that are affected by you. And this set is reliant on other people. And this is why gear sets like Alkosh, I've, I've always said it's difficult to use Alkosh for like more beginner level tanks because you're relying on your group to provide the synergies. You're relying on yourself to, to use them at the right time. And it's the same with this jewelry set. You're relying on your group. And so it's out of your control whether you get any benefit or not. So if your group never provides you any synergy, you're wearing a set of jewelry that's doing absolutely nothing. So this is a risky set of jewelry to use outside of Cloudrest. If my only place that I personally use it would be Cloudrest. Outside of that, I would never tell anybody to use it because you're much better off going for that permanent effect that you're always going to be able to benefit from. Okay. So kind of other notable mentions. So generally that those are my top four jewelry traits for tanking. Now, you can use things like Robust. So, Robust is a fine trait for like off-tank situations where you set up as a kind of damage dealer tank hybrid. Sometimes when you really want max stamina to be really high, because maybe, maybe you struggle with stamina because you're trying to maintain stagger on a DK, and stagger uses loads and loads of stamina, you're really struggling to sustain. So you might use a couple of Robust instead of the Triune, but that means you are gonna have lower health, lower Magicka. But that is something you could do if you really wanted to. And so Robust isn't too bad. Um, things like healthy, I don't really rate healthy jewelry that much because I do think having that real, real high max health isn't as good as having a good balance of all three stats. Like I think Triune performs at a much better level by having all three rather than just focusing in on health because we've already got huge, huge health pools at the moment, especially with all the champion points. I can get to 50K health without needing healthy jewelry. Things like Arcane, Robust, Healthy, they're okay to use, but they're not as, I don't I don't like them as much as trying when you can spread resources among different kind of, all, all three areas, because you need to be able to use all three areas of the tank. Um, one of the downsides of using something like Potion Cooldown as a trait, uh, well, as a jewelry setup is, if you forget to use a potion, for example, then you, it's effectively a waste of time because you're not benefiting from that cooldown. The whole point of having the reduced cooldown is so you use potions on the cooldown to benefit from getting that sustain more often. So things like that, you've got to think about when you go over, um, when you're going over your jewelry. Something like infused magicka recovery is at least giving you consistent magicka compared to like if you do infuse potion cooldown. If you don't use a potion, you're getting nothing. If you don't ever cast, if you don't ever cast a spell. Infused Magicka is a waste of time as well. Like, if you don't ever cast spells and your Magicka's full, then you might as well just use Triune because you're not benefiting from anything. You've got to, you've got to look at your situation. If you don't cast spells, if you do things like that, Triune is a permanent benefit. That's my number one reason why that is the trait I prefer over everything else. Right, so let's move on to Jewelry Glyphs. So, another interesting topic because another thing that confuses people. So we're going to start with the number one glyph that people use and don't understand, I would say, is Bracing. Now, a Bracing Enchant, 203 uh, reduced cost of block. Okay. If you use this on an infused... Like, if you use this on an infused uh, jewelry piece, it's supposed to be 324 block cost reduction. Now we've spoke about this before with, with in terms of block cost reduction and how like the champion points, for example, the champion point, Tireless Guardian, is supposed to reduce your block by 40 and it's actually 17 stamina. Because of how block cost is calculated behind the scenes, it doesn't actually give you the value that it says and it's exactly the same when it comes to the jewelry. So one of the big problems we've got with this is even though it says it's gonna be 203 block cost reduction, it's way less much, much less than it says. So, I mean, let's look at our block cost reduction. So, 
Our block cost is 831. That's what our block cost is right now. If we use a block cost piece of jewelry. So there we go. If you use block cost. So our block cost was 831. Reduce the block cost by 324. So that's minus 324. So our block cost effectively should be 507 if we equip this piece of jewelry. So let's put that on and then let's go and have a look at what we're actually going to get. So we look at our character, 674. So our block cost is actually 167 more than it's supposed to be because the jewelry says it's going to reduce our block cost by a certain value. And it's 167 difference in stamina. So people really don't see um, that that is, like for me, that's a problem. I would rather have something that's going to give me what it says, kind of what it says on the tin. I don't want something that actually is calculated behind the scenes in a weird way and then gives you a much lower value. So we're supposed to get 324 block cost reduction and actually it was nowhere near that. It was much less. Is it worth it? If he wasn't using full sturdy gear, then it's probably worth considering using an infused block cost reduction. But block cost reduction is not very valuable, in my opinion, on the jewelry. You're much better off going full sturdy gear. There's no benefit really to using infused gear. There's no real benefit to using anything else. You don't really need reinforced gear. You don't need any other trait as a tank on your body pieces. Sturdy is the best trait because when you use the block cost reduction enchants, they don't really have much value whatsoever. So it's better off sturdy gear and then benefit from magicka recovery or reduced cost or something else because block cost enchants, bracing enchants, do not have the value that they say. It's way less. And if you consider... If, if we put on three pieces of bracing, our block cost is going to go super low, don't get me wrong. So three infused bracing should be 972 block cost reduction which should make our block essentially zero. Our block is still 358. So that's really, really low. Don't get me wrong. 358 stamina per block is super low, which might sound great. However, when you now go to our magic recovery, our magic recovery is 1,000. So we've lost between 5 and 800 magic recovery by using three infused uh, bracing enchants, which is giving nowhere near the value that it says it's going to give. Um, so if we look at that, 358. So our starting block cost was 831 and we've now got 358. So by using three infused block cost reduction, we've only actually reduced our block by 473. We've only benefited by 473 block cost reduction. It's supposed to be 972. It's supposed to be 972 and it's actually only given us 473. So a massive, massive waste of time to use bracing enchants. And this is something that a lot of people don't realize. When I look through logs on ESO logs, people are using three bracing enchants and it blows my mind because I don't think they've actually looked at what effect it has on your stat sheet. When you look at that block cost, it's not doing anything. It's doing very, very little. But you're losing so much um, sustain. You're losing, like, yeah, you've gained a bit, a little bit of stamina sustain. But you've lost all of your magic sustain. You're going to have to be casting balance a lot. You're going to have to do a lot of other stuff now to get other resources. It's going to be a struggle. Um, and you're not going to, you, you're not actually going to be able to block for a longer period of time because, like, we've not used Triune Jewelry anymore. So now we've lost loads of stamina. Uh, we've got no Magicka. So if you're a Dragon Knight, you can't use as many Igneous Shields because your Magicka recovery is too slow. So it has a real negative impact on your ability. And it's such a waste to use them as well. People don't really understand and realize how bad bracing is and how bad the tireless guardian cp is it's like it's a thing that people don't seem to realize and this is why infused magic recovery and things like that are way more efficient than using block cost now sometimes using one bracing will help a little bit so if you find with your magic sustain it's okay you can do whatever you need to do but it's just not worth using three bracing using one it is like the limit on where I would go with it. If you've got full sturdy gear, limit yourself to one bracing as a maximum. But the difference between one and none is only about 150 stamina cost reduction. 141, I think it is, 
if you use one brace and enchant, it's actually only 141 stamina cost reduction. So, and I think that's infused. Yeah, that's infused. So if you use one infused bracing, that's 141 block cost reduction instead of 324. So there's, there's a lot of numbers going on behind the scenes that you can't see. A lot of things that you've got to consider, but have a think about what you're using because it's not as good as it looks. It's really not. Okay, so now we've absolutely ripped bracing to pieces. Let's have a look at some other useful enchants. So bracing was the first one I wanted to talk about because this one is the most unknown one. This is the, the one that people don't really understand and know that information about. When we move on to the next one, so our next jewelry enchant that I want to talk about is flame resist. Now... The only time I've really seen people use this is for Stone Guard and Hard Mode. Stone Guard and Hard Mode? There's like certain situations where people have used it. But when you use things like Flame Resist or Shock Resist or Ice Resist or whatever, Frost Resistance, what you've got to consider is if you've got max spell resistance, that doesn't do anything as well. So let's, if we're talking about resistances, if you've got 33k spell resistance, the fire resistance is included within the spell resistance. So if you use like a flame resistance glyph, if you're a 33k spell resistance, it's not going to do anything because you're already at the spell resistance cap. And spell resistance includes all types of magical spell-based effects. So fire, ice, shock, magic damage. Those things are all included in spell resistance. So there's no point using like a flame resistance enchant if you're at the cap on spell resistance. Now, the only time it's worth it, if you're going into a fight where you're going to take a lot of fire damage or a lot of fire dots and the flame damage enchant, there it is, it gives you 3,520 flame resistance. So if you've got 29,480 spell resistance or lower, then this will have an impact on the fire damage you're taking. If you've got more than 29,480 spell resistance, then it's not worth using because you're not getting the value of the glyph. So you've got to consider if it's worth it or not. I've seen people use it in a couple of dungeons when there's like a specific fire dot or there's a specific thing that hits really, really hard. They've used this to cap out their, their resistance. So basically, if you've got 29,000 480 spell resistance and then you use a flame resistance glyph that means when you take flame damage you're resisting it by 33k which is the limit so that's when it's good to use but otherwise it's not really worth it um on to the next glyph magicka recovery for tanks number one in my opinion this is absolutely number one for tanking i don't use any other glyph at all i only use magicka recovery for tanking unless it's a real specific trial or situation where I need something else. So it's not very often I do, but like Sunspire. On the first boss in Sunspire, I use stamina recovery sometimes on the ice on the ice dragon when I'm range tanking. Otherwise, I'm just always using Magicka recovery for everything. And the reason why Magicka recovery is so vital and so important, all of your abilities cost Magicka. If we take this one character as an example, I've only really got two skills that cost stamina. So my taunt. 1,000 stamina, very cheap. Heroic Slash, that's stamina. But then everything else, Igneous Shield. You, you need Igneous Shield. Igneous Shield is a fantastic skill. Gives you and your group a shield. Causes Major Mending, gives you stamina back. So you're going to cast this a lot. You self-heal, Green Dragon Blood. That costs Magicka. You go onto your back bar. Engulfing Flames, it costs Magicka. Your Range Taunt, Magicka. Your Blockade, Magicka. Your Taunt is Magicka. Uh, sorry, your Chain is Magicka. Your, your Crowd Control skills are all Magicka. Everything that you're doing... If we look through this, pretty much all of your Dragon Knight skills on Magicka. Now, how do you sustain doing that? Will you keep... Um, you, you put everything into Magicka Recovery. You need to have as high Magicka Recovery as possible. When it comes to stacking Magicka, Magicka Recovery, I always have... But, um, I always have Balance to help me if I can't sustain with just my Magicka Recovery. Um, I like to have Barrier on my front bar with the Magicka Aid passive for 10% more Magicka Recovery. I always run the Atronaut Mundestone, and then I always run three jewelry with three Magicka Recovery. I've just showed you how bad bracing is, and that's the reason why instead I aim for sustain, because 
The most important thing for tanking, in my opinion, is sustain. If you can't sustain, you're dead. If you can't keep up your magicka, you can't heal yourself, so you're dead. If you can't sustain your stamina, you can't block, so you die. So sustain is everything for tanking. Uh, Mag Magicka recovery is the most important thing that you want to stack. Magicka recovery and stats are the two most important things. Resistance is semi-important. Over 25k resistance is where you want to be. And those are the things you need to go and aim for. So once you can kind of hit those things, that's, that's where you need to be at. The next one is potion boost. There's only really one situation where I use this. There's maybe two. So increase the duration of potion effects by 3.6 seconds. Now, the only time I use this is I combine potion boost on infused jewelry. This increases the duration of your potion effects. Now, the reason why this is important is only when I'm using immovable potions. So when I use an immovable potion, I'm able to get immove the immovable effect for 33 seconds. So a potion lasts for 45 seconds, okay? But you can get the immovable to last for 33, I think it's 33.2 seconds by using potion boost jewelry on infused, like an infused trait. Now what the benefit of that is, if you actually look in the champion points, we've got some things here. So hardened, um, well, let's go for juggernaut. You've got the Juggernaut CP slottable. While under the effects of crowd control immunity, you take 2% less damage per stage. This can stack up to 10%. You can actually gain this by using immovable potions with the, with the potion boost jewelry. So 33 seconds, you can have 10% reduced damage. So 33 seconds, every 45 seconds, you can use the Juggernaut passive because you're able to gain that crowd control immunity. The immovable effect is crowd control immunity. So... That is a way to proc these CP passives by having that infused jewelry, potion boost, immovable potions, CP passives, nice and easy. There's also another one over here that's really good. Uh, I think it's this one. On guard while under the effects of crowd control immunity. Increase the amount of damage you can block by 2% per stage. This also stacks up to 10%. So you can get that as well. You can get both of those by using that particular setup. Another really good place for using infused potion boost with the immovable potions is in Ethereum Archive. So if you go into Ethereum Archive, on the last boss, you've got all the axes. Some people really struggle to keep sustaining dealing with the axes. A great way to actually do that trial is by using that jewelry setup. And then what you can do is you can drop block for 33 seconds every 45 seconds. You can heavy attack the boss. You can switch bar. You can buff up on your back bar. You do your front bar. You can do everything. And you're not going to get stunned. So the axes won't lose aggro. It's a great way to keep aggro of the axes because what happens is if you run out of stamina and an axe hits you and you get stunned, you lose aggro of the axes and they all run away. And it can be an absolute nightmare. It can be really chaotic if that happens. A way to avoid that is by giving yourself crowd control immunity by using immovable potions with this jewelry. And then for 33 seconds, every 45 seconds, you cannot lose the axes. You can drop your block. You can do whatever you want. But you just need to make sure if you do that setup that... When you get to those 33 seconds, for the last few seconds, you do need to block. You can't obviously go... Um, you do need to block towards the end of the potion or else you could get stunned still. So it's just a great way to maintain your sustain in that high damage situation. And that leads on to the next one. Potion speed. Um, again, this is the opposite side. So instead of increasing the duration of your potion effects, this makes your potion be available faster. So if you use three infused potion uh, cooldown you're going to be able to use your potions quicker. And as I said before, this is really good for like Argonians. If you're an Argonian tank, it can be really good because then you can benefit from using um, the potion. You've also got the passive that gives you more resources when you use a potion. And then you can also benefit from using those faster. Really, really like fast on, on a much quicker cooldown. Um, you need some potion boost jewelry. If you're using a set like Arcasis, you want to be using your potions sooner. So you do need to use potion boost jewelry. Not three pieces though, but you do want to use a bit of potion boost jewelry to get to the 30 second cooldown with Arcasis. Um, I don't really use this too often. Nightblade tanks would benefit from it as well because they've got a the Catalyst passive, which, ga which gains ultimate every time you use a potion. So again, another situation where it's going to be really valuable. But it's really situational for me. If you really struggle for sustain, it's an option. But 
I wouldn't really commit to using this for everything because it's really super expensive. And if you don't use a potion on cooldown, you might as well be using something else. So don't use this if you don't use potions on cooldown. If you don't do that, you're wasting the trait. It's not worth it. You might as well just use something where you get a permanent benefit. Magicka recovery is a permanent benefit. As long as you cast Magicka skills and your Magicka is never at full, then you're always gaining benefit from Magicka recovery. So that's, if you look at it in that kind of way, figure out which one's going to work best for you. Next, we've got the Prismatic Recovery. This is one that I wanted to mention because I've seen people using it, but it's a really, really bad jewelry trait. So you get a little bit of Magicka recovery, a little bit of health recovery, a little bit of stamina recovery. So what you're doing here is instead of just going for Magicka recovery and getting a load of Magicka recovery, you're splitting it and getting all three. And the reason why this isn't a good thing is because one, when you're blocking, you don't gain stamina recovery. So if you're blocking for five seconds, you lose two ticks of stamina recovery. So you've just wasted the, your whole time of using it. When you stack health recovery, 84 health recovery from a piece of jewelry is going to do virtually nothing. If you're going to stack health recovery, you need to be stacking it to 3, 4, 5k to see any real benefit. Like you need to stack health recovery so high to actually see any actual use from it. There's no point trying to get your health recovery from 1000 to 1100. It's going to do absolutely nothing. You're not even going to realize that you're getting 100 extra healing. So... In my opinion, this is a massive waste of time to use this sort of jewelry trait because the stamina doesn't do anything, the health recovery is ineffective, and the magicka recovery is diminished because you've used a much smaller amount of magicka recovery. So it's given you almost no benefit compared to just going three magicka recovery. So I would just say don't use prismatic recovery. It's not really that use useful. Reduce feet cost. So this is particularly good for certain situations again. Let's say you're using Powerful Assault on an off-tank with Echoing Vigor. Um, this could be quite useful. So if you're using Vigor a lot, or maybe you're having to step side to side, and you're having to do a lot of running about, use an infused uh, reduced feet cost, reduced stamina cost, is actually pretty good, because it's going to reduce the cost of your stamina abilities. Now, reduced cost does have diminishing returns. Like, you don't want to stack reduced cost super, super high, because the more you add the less value you get. The same way as bracing does the same thing. So block cost reduction has that real bad diminishing returns. If you stack diminishing returns really high, there's no benefit. It's the same for reduced cost of stamina skills and magicka skills. So if you stack it too high, you don't really get as much of a benefit. But it is really, really good to use this sometimes. Again, if you're using defensive stance to reflect projectiles, if you're using a lot of stamina skills, maybe on a Templar tank that has quite a lot of stamina abilities. If you're doing dungeon content, on a class that needs to use Silver Leash, using reduced stamina cost for those bits can be really, really good. So yeah, that is an option for those situations, but generally it's not something you'll use all the time. Again, you could use an infused stamina cost reduction on a DK tank who's using Stagger. I wouldn't go more than one because if you don't use any Magicka recovery, you probably struggle for your sustain for other areas, but definitely using one stamina cost reduction on a Dragon Knight for Stagger is really good. Like I say, one or two cost reduction on a Templar is really, really good. So there, there are, it is possible to use these and make use of them. Magicka Recovery is going to tick every two seconds. So you're going to benefit from Magicka Recovery every single two seconds. Now, if you don't use your Magicka, then you're going to get zero benefit. So for example, right now, my Magicka Recovery is ticking right now every two seconds, but it's doing nothing because I'm at full Magicka. So the only way for me to benefit from Magicka Recovery is to cast a skill. I've got to cast a skill, and if I don't cast a skill, my Magicka, my Magicka Recovery is doing nothing. So right now, look, there's my Magicka Recovery. Never let your Magicka Recovery be full on a tank. On a DK tank, you just cast Igneous Shield. So you do this, look. Now, the only time reduced cost is better is when you're casting a lot of skills, because Magicka Recovery is going to tick every two seconds no matter what. The cost reduction is only effective when you cast an ability. It'll be a lower costed ability. So if you've got reduced Magicka cost, but then you don't cast a Magicka skill every second or every two seconds, then it, you're wasting it. You're wasting the reduced cost if you don't use a skill that's costing that particular resource. Do you know what I mean? So Magicka recovery is a permanent thing that, that activates every two seconds, no matter what. Reduced cost is only effective when you're casting a skill. So if you've got a reduced Magicka cost jewellery piece on, that's useless. It's not doing anything. It's just a waste of an enchant until you cast a Magicka skill. Then it becomes useful. 
but you could have lost a load of Magicka by that point. The next one. So when we talked about the Prismatic recovery, not really very useful, but the Prismatic skill cost reduction can be somewhat useful. So obviously it's a massive difference. So you get 203 reduced cost of abilities. If you use like a reduced Magicka or Stamina cost, it's 203 of those. But if you wanted to reduce the cost of all your abilities, um, you can use a Prismatic cost reduction instead. This reduces the cost of your Health, Magic, and Stamina abilities by 133. So if you were to use an Infused piece, it's going to be buffed up and it's going to be a little bit better. I don't... Th the thing is, recovery is generally better than reduced cost. The only time reduced cost is better is if you're using a skill every single second. So if you are a tank who uses a skill every single second without fail, so you're using a stamina skill or a health skill or a magicka skill every second, then this is potentially going to have slightly more benefit than recovery. But overall, recovery usually outperforms cost reduction. And as I said before, cost reduction hits that diminishing returns and then doesn't do anything. Because cost reduction, when you're reducing the cost of abilities, it's the same as reducing the cost of block. When you're reducing the cost, you hit those diminishing returns and then it has less of an impact. So if you stack three prismatic cost reduction, it won't actually be the value that it's saying. You won't gain um, like 399 cost reduction. It won't be that much. It'll be less than that because of how things are worked out behind the scenes. Because it'll also it'll be diminished because you'll also have skills that reduce the cost. You'll have passives like your, your medium armor passives. If you're a like um, if you're a red guard, the reduced cost passives in a red guard they're gonna affect the usefulness of this. So it's just not as great to use this. Um, if you wanted to use one or two of them then you could do. If you're in a real intense situation where, like I say, you're using loads and loads of balance or loads and loads of skills, maybe on like a Necro off tank, this might be kind of good when you're using loads of Empowering Grasp and loads of Vigors to keep up PA and Empowering Grasp. That's when I can kind of see some benefit to using it as an off tank who's not having to tank many enemies. But in that case, you are going to have really, really low magic recovery. So you're going to struggle for sustain very, very quickly because you're using this particular... Thing instead of magical recovery so it's something to be wary of there is there is the opportunity to use this but it's not going to perform as good as magical recovery in most situations finally we've got stamina recovery as i said before stamina recovery doesn't work when you're blocking with a sword and uh when you're using like one hand and shield or when you're using a staff without the trifocus passive when you block stamina recovery stops ticking so you get nothing but there are situations when stamina recovery can be useful, as I said before. If you're doing the Locusties fight when you're range tanking, the Locusties dragon in Sunspire, you're at the back of the room, you spam in defensive stance. When you're doing that, you don't need to block because you're reflecting the damage. You're reflecting the projectile back at the boss. So you don't need to actually block. When you're not blocking, you can benefit from stamina recovery. Now, stamina recovery is only worth using if you don't ever have to block. If you have to block now and again, if let's say... In te every 10 seconds, you block for 8 seconds, so you're only getting one tick of stamina recovery, then obviously it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be worth it. If you're able to not block for like 90% of the fight, then obviously stamina recovery might have some minor value. So if you can afford to not block for like 90, 80, 90% 90 of a fight, maybe stamina recovery might have a little bit of value. But overall, it's not worth it because you do have to block more than 90% of a fight. Like... Most fights require you to block more than 50% of the time. So it wouldn't really be worth using stamina recovery at any point ever. Because magicka recovery is going to tick constantly 100% of the time. The only time magicka recovery wouldn't work is if you're using a frost staff with the trifocus passive. It means you're going to block with magicka. And that's something that I advise most people not to do because it becomes very, very tricky. Um, in that situation, stamina recovery does work, but... It's not worth it. So, I think that's everything, guys. So, that is kind of... That is my overview of tank jewellery, tank traits, and, and enchants for tanking. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know in the chat. And thanks very much for, for watching.